Hello, I'm Pam Carruthers of Healing Stars. This is the new moon for the 29th of November 2016. It's set for London. What's important about this new moon is it's in Sagittarius, which is the sign of the optimist, the archer, always looking for the future on a mission, full of hope, full of joy. It's ruled by Jupiter, the planet of joy. And here we have Jupiter halfway through the sign of Libra. And it's forming that Jupiter in opposition to Uranus, the planet of radical change. And that will be exact around Christmas. Meanwhile, what's of great importance at this new moon is that, first of all, it's next to an asteroid called Juno. If you see G J U N in the chart here. And Juno is the goddess Hera, the goddess of marriage, of partnership. So the fact that the new moon is exactly next to Juno is indicated there may well be new partnerships, new relationships coming into our lives, or new relationships, or old relationships rather, ending. What's significant about this is that it's exactly, if you see the red lines here, it's exactly at a square, a challenging aspect to the nodes of the moon. Here's the north node in Virgo, the south node in Pisces, just about moving away from the very degree of where Neptune is it's at uh, nine, because the nodes go backwards through the zodiac. They're not planets, they're points in space and they form eclipses. And if you look back, if you remember the 1st of September this year, we had a partial solar eclipse, but it was still an eclipse. And it was at nine degrees of Virgo. Now that's where Neptune is opposite now still, because Neptune's so slow moving, though it has moved forward. But this new moon is picking it up. It's almost at eight degrees, so it's close enough. So therefore, if you want to look back around September, what was happening for you then? This will give you some clues as to what this new moon means for you. Now the planet, or in this, this, this case, the, the new moon and Juno, if, that's, if you've got that in your birth chart, a planet at the right angle to the nodes of the moon, this is one of the things I specialize in because the axis, the nodes of the moon, to do with our destiny, the north node, the past, what we release, but also our talents at the south. I happen to have Neptune and the south node together in my chart, not in Pisces, of course, I'm far too old for that, but actually in Libra. Now, if you have a planet at a right angle, what that's signifying is, it's part of your evolution. And in the work of Stephen Forrest and Geoffrey Wolf Green, they talk about it being an e a skipped step in evolution. And the idea is to work out what kind of story that planet or planets at the, at the square to the nodes is telling. And the release point is always opposite. So in this case, the release point is Gemini. And Gemini twins, Gemini, the trickster, but also the messenger, the angel. And Gemini is governed by Mercury. And Mercury is the planet that governs the North Node. This is quite a story in itself. One could call it a mystery. But the North Node, governed by Mercury, Mercury is in Jupiter's sign. The South Node in Pisces is to do with Neptune, but also to do traditionally with Jupiter. So there we have our conundrum. There's a story that we need to release from the past that will bring us forward into the future. Mercury is also in Sagittarius. So this could well be a question of faith and beliefs. What kind of beliefs do you have about yourself? Do you look upwards? Are you an optimist? Or do you look down the ground and you go, oh no, that won't work? Which is your attitude towards your life? Is it a new day, a new dawning at the new moon? 
because that's what new moons signify. They're a seeding process. But also notice that the sun and moon will, moon moves very fast, but the sun will be in about 10 days time, will join Saturn. One day a year it does that. And that's the time of commitment, of saying yes, in a way, in a way that has a plan, a plan for your future. Have you been thinking about the new year? It's the turning point for all of us. Have you made any plans for the new year? To me, it's a very important time to set our intention for the new year, but also with others who can keep us accountable. Saturn is the planet of accountability. It really does want to check up on us and, and say, you know, how are you doing? It loves exams, Saturn. Capricorns are very prone to loving that kind of structure in their lives. So I'm encouraging you at this time, I know it's not Christmas yet, I know it's not the new year, but to start thinking ahead. Saturn is here at this time in the, in the sign of Sagittarius to do with faith and beliefs. Jupiter in Libra wants balance, it wants harmony and it wants a relationship. Uranus wants radical change. So I suggest that this seeding at this time is for you to start to look within and commit to what brings you joy. Mars, that wonderful planet that is the planet of action, is making a very good trine and forming, it's, it's coming towards it, Jupiter. So Mars is saying in Aquarius, find a group, a community that brings you that connection. We all need it. We all need our network. What's yours? If you'd like to join me and my friend Catherine Varley, we're doing an amazing retreat at the new year in a place called Florence House in Seaford in Sussex. It's on the south coast. It's near the Seven Sisters. The Seven Sisters connect us to the Pleiades. That wonderful constellation that us in the Northern Hemisphere can see at this time of year is near Orion. It's quite magical to be in the sacred place that has a connection with the stars, the constellations. I believe it's a sacred time. I'd love for you to join us. There's more on my website, healingstars.com. But if you can't, I would suggest you also tune in in the following months and especially when the Moon and Venus come together, more of that later, on the 3rd, that's December the 3rd, at the Throat Chakra, our second Power Chakra. Find out more at my website, healingstars.com. Thank you for listening and watching today.